What's up everyone, Paul Carl here. Today we've got an automated postcard listing app and I'm gonna show you how this works and how you can download it um, and use it yourself for free. And we're gonna get right into it. This is gonna be the first video in a series on creating automated eBay listers. The first thing we're gonna do here is scan in some postcards. Um, I'm doing it through Chrono Card, but you can do it through Paper Stream or Epson scan or whatever whatever scanning software you use with your scanner. I'm just used to Chrono Card, so this is how I'm gonna do it. So what do we got here? Seven postcards to test. All right. Um, you don't have to do this, but I like to do this. I want my scans to all be landscape mode, so I'm gonna just rotate them all. Your scanner software probably does this automatically. And let's see. I'm gonna just delete this. I'm gonna create a new folder. So the way that it works is the folder becomes your SKU. So if these are in like box one, tab A, you could do like one A. However you do it, you can put that information into the SKU or into the folder name and that will be the SKU to where these are going. Uh, now what I gotta do next is, not that, not that. <laughs> I'm gonna run the app and let's see. So you have settings here, this is where you'll put um, so I guess you can see here, luckily it blurs it out. So you're going to need AWS, um, and an AWS secret key. Um, I have documentation on how to do this for card Cobra. Um, that would apply here too. So I'll put a link to that in the description and then the open API key, you get that from signing up for open AI. You'll probably have to put in, load some credits in like 10 bucks or whatever. If you want to test it, five bucks. You get all these policies from your eBay store. The input directory is the folder that it looks into. So in here, this is demo. So it's looking in this folder for all subfolders that are in here and it will loop through each folder. So I'm just gonna put those in that folder so that it knows what SKU to use. Let me see what else we got here. So you need your bucket name, base URL, you don't need this. That is just there because I haven't deleted it. <laughs> um, but yeah, you, and you can put your HTML for your description here. The first line of description is that you're going to get the exact card in the scans, message if you have any questions, like boilerplate stuff, um, and save settings once you get it all set up. And then once it's all set up, you don't really have to worry about it. You can just cr click on Create Listings, and oh, it's skipping it because it already processed this. It has it in my output folder because um, I did a test before this. So I'm going to go ahead and delete my output folder because that's not necessary anymore. And now when I hit create listings, it'll do it. And here in the terminal, uh, in the background here, you can see it's spitting out all of the information that the AI is pulling from the postcard images. And it's going to use this information to build the listing. And towards the end of this video, after I finish demonstrating it, I'll explain how this all works. And this, this is, I think, a good... Um, kind of proof of concept for how you can approach doing automated eBay listings for things. I did a live stream on it. You probably haven't seen it. Probably not worth watching. <laughs> uh, where I kind of rant about this stuff. Um, I want to make it a little bit more coherent. Uh, but I guess while this is running and processing, uh, the way that it works is it takes all these images and it does some editing, like squares the front, squares the back, adds your custom background color, does a side-by-side -side image, and um, oh, it also appends my branding image, which I probably should add as a um, option. I gotta update that before this goes live. Um, anyways, so it does all the image editing, and it sends the images to ChatGTP, and has these prompts here to ask it to get all this information for the item specifics. And the item specifics are these like city values, there's over 1600, country values, there's over 100, era, there's only 14 here, and it's gonna do its best to pick the best one and leave it blank if it doesn't have a confident answer. Um, so these are all pulled from eBay's template, the postcard listing template. And then this is the template here. Uh, once, once it's doing all that, you can see here to spit out the output. So it just finished doing it. All of the information that it gathers is then used to fill out this um, like sample upload CSV. And I should probably add a setting for like Canada and other countries. These are things that'll, that'll work on in the future or, or somebody else can join me on this adventure because um, I'm just going to open source these projects. 
then uh, the link to the GitHub will be in the description also. Anyways, it did the seven postcards. So let's go back to here. Um, there's my wonderful YouTube viewing information. <laughs> uh, let's get rid of that. So you go to, in your eBay seller hub, you go to reports, uploads. And when you go there, you'll see the screen. I'm gonna refresh it just to make sure it's active. And now I'm gonna upload a template and I'm gonna use from the output folder of the postcard lister. We'll upload this and we'll see how it did. All right, completed. Let's look at the scheduled. I had three from my first test, but you can see here, it's generating all these titles. The title generation needs to be improved because um, it's not using the full length. So there is a lot of opportunity for like improving the SEO and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, it generates all this stuff. We can take a look. Let's take a look at like Indiana, Pennsylvania, see what item specifics it did. This is a branding image. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'll change this probably like shortly after I upload this video um, because then you can customize it and have your own branding image. And the purpose of this is just for SEO. Um, instead of just having one image or two images like most postcard sellers will have, you get your three to four here. And as I add more postcards to my store, I'm gonna get more information on like what you need to be you know top, top tier in terms of your listing quality. And I'm gonna add that into here too at some point um but we can see single unit it's city you got indiana theme was greetings printed photochrome i don't know if photochrome is accurate that might be a lithograph it didn't identify that it was posted um it does it is supposed to check for that there's there's room for improvement this is something that i made quickly but i just wanted to roll it out and show people what's possible and get the get the ball rolling on some of these cool projects uh, anyway, yeah, these are all ready to go. What it does is it appends the date too, so you know what date you listed it. So if you're doing like end and sell similar, you can basically do a search by your custom label for a particular date. So let's say, you know, on the 14th of next month, I'm gonna search for the previous month and end and sell similar to get another boost in the rankings. That's what you can do there. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and reschedule these. I do 6 p.m. Pacific, because that's when most of the traffic is on eBay. Uh, and that way, when you get the new listing boost, you get it to correspond when there's the most people on the site. And that's a good strategy to get extra eyeballs on your listings. And I, I just priced them all at eight ninety nine. Um, I think it's going to do that by default right now. I should add a pricing setting. <laughs> I haven't used it enough myself to kind of work out all the little kinks. Uh, but yeah, if you do want to change the price, you can just bulk edit these to have whatever price you want. My goal and what I'm going to do is basically just list a whole bunch at $8.99 free shipping and do like a buy two, get two free coupon so that people can buy, you know, pick out four postcards for almost 20 bucks shipped eBay standard envelope. So that's the strategy. That's, that's the proof of concept here. Now let's talk about the AI side of things. This is all handled in this vision handler.py file. I'm going to word wrap this. So it's sending this message with the images for each listing to get the data from uh, OpenAI. And one of the things I put here is if you can't find exact match, return nothing for that element, just an empty string. So that won't just make up an item specific. And what I think I need to do here is tighten up the prompting. And this could use some like experimentation and maybe some more instructions. So for example, where's posted? Did I even put posted in here? That's probably why, oh yeah, either posted or unposted. Um, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and add that if a postcard has a stamp on it and or writing, it is posted. <laughs> um, I'm gonna say if it is blank, it's unposted. There we go. <laughs> thank, thank you, AI. <laughs> um, all right, there we go. And, and then this right here, um, ChatGCP is weird. So like, if it had a celebrity in it, it'll be like, I don't know who that is. 
and it just like shuts it down. So I put it in here so that it doesn't try to personally identify anyone um, and cause problems with the response. Uh, but yeah, I think I think that the way to improve the quality of the listing in order to have the um, exact item specifics done in in its totality as accurately as possible, uh, it should have more specific ex uh, prompts for each thing. So that's why I added this little thing for if. Um, oh, cool! Actually, I like the suggestion. If you can't determine if it's posted or not, choose unposted. Uh, no, I don't like that. I'm gonna leave that out because I don't want it to say unposted and be wrong um sorry anyway i think for like era or type especially type this could use some more instructions like how do you know what which one of these types is the one to pick this is something that i don't i just don't know enough about postcards to come up I, like i can tell what a what a rppc is that's <laughs> pretty easy everything else i kind of assume is a printed lithograph uh, but what are the other one? The one that we looked at said it was something else. I don't even know if it is on. Wait a minute. Let's, let's go back. Let's, we looked at this one. What did it say for type? Did it make one up? Type printed lithograph. Okay. So that, that does seem correct. So what, what was I doing? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm ruining this video. Oh, photochrome. That's the era. Okay. Okay. And that era probably makes sense. Well, let me see. 1939 till now. Yeah. All right. Cool. So it did better than I thought. <laughs> uh, but anyways, I think improving the prompts is going to be one way to, to get better results and more complete results. And it's something I just don't know enough about postcards. So if it's something that you want to talk about, like, let's do it. Let's, let's work on it and try to improve it. We can do some tests. I have maybe, like... 10 postcards or so left i'm gonna pick up some more soon and and like really go hard at this and just see what happens uh but this this is what it is right now and i think it has a ton of potential especially if it can get all the item specifics done perfectly uh there's another option there we could do like a gui um let me open recent so i did this for celebrity autographs this one is not public yet um, let me go ahead and run this. I didn't expose any keys, right? Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> um, so what this does, you load a directory here for this one. So I'm going to do auto images. And then when you send it to the AI, it fills out. And as you, each, each listing is its own row. So you can kind of check. It'll have like all the item specifics basically in the SKU. And you can set the price and all that good stuff and quantity if you want. Um, this is something that we could do for the postcard lister if it's something that you want to like really check and if, if it was done this way then the title could be generated more like algorithmically so you can get better keywords and really maximize the usage of those 80 characters so this is another idea that I'm gonna float out there um, see what you guys think but this is this is what it is right now in a nutshell you can download it you can use it right now um, if it's something that you want help with you can reach out to me um, and, and, you know, we could probably get you set up in 30 to 60 minutes. Um, anyways, I appreciate you checking out the video. Let me know what you think about this. Let me know what you think about the software if you get a chance to use it. I'm going to go ahead and fix that branding image and add it as a setting and recommit <laughs> a new update. And maybe I'll, I'll, I'll add a setting for, like, default price. And then that way everything can be, you know, whatever price you want it to be. And then if there's, you know, let's say you listed a $50 postcard, you can go and change that before it goes live. By default, everything schedules to the next day at some time. I don't know. Um, but that's just so that you can make sure they go live at the proper time for your time zone. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> Thanks again, guys. Thanks for tolerating this uh, mediocre video at best. I hope you get a ton of value and sell a ton of postcards. Um, yeah, have a good one.